Hi everybody, I wanted to create a video tutorial for you um, about the circuit construction kit simulation from FET. So this is my absolute favorite simulation from FET and I always can't believe it's free. So anybody can use this even after our class is over um, if you guys want to use this totally available to you. So before we start the activity for today which is about um, finding patterns in series and parallel circuits I wanted to show you how to use the tools in the simulation. So to get started you are just going to open Safari or Google Chrome, whatever your web browser is. And I'm just going to Google FET Circuit Construction Kit. And this is one of the FET simulations that is not available on your iPad yet through the app. So you're going to want to use one of the desktop computers in the classroom. Okay, so there's two options. There's DC only and then there's AC and DC. So for our class right now, we're going to be in DC only. Okay, so now you're here, this is the sim that you need. You're just going to go to download and I'm going to kind of grab that from here. And I, a lot of times you may get um, the security preferences. So this is telling me this is from an unidentified developer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to go into my settings on my computer and this may happen to you as well when you're uh, working. So I may as well show you how to do it. Here it is. Sorry, I lost my settings for a minute. And once you get into settings, we're going to go into security. Let's see if I can find that. Security and privacy. Okay, general. Okay, and if you're on a Mac here, this will be general. And you can see right down here, I have this little message saying that those circuit um, construction kit was blocked from opening because it's from an unidentified um, developer. So I'm going to hit open anyway. Okay. So here's the screen once you start out. And the first circuit that I'm having you build today is a pretty simple circuit. So you can check out the handout that you got that says searching for patterns in series and parallel circuits. If you look, We've got a battery that has the positive terminal up, so I'm going to pull a battery from the side, and all you're going to do is you're going to click and drag it. Now this battery isn't oriented the way that I need it for the activity, but if you click on one of the ends, see where these red circles are, it allows you to rotate the object, and this will be true of all of the circuit elements that we can choose. Okay, so now I have the battery the way I need it to be and basically I have a wire and then I see something that says A2. The A's stand for an ammeter. So an ammeter is right over here in tools and an ammeter, see how it says AMM? So it should remind you of the unit amp, right? So an ammeter can measure the current through um, a point in the wire or, you know, the circuit element. So in this case, let me build the circuit first. So I'm going to build the circuit first. And you might see as I build this that you could probably do it in a simpler way. For example, I could have just used one wire here. But I'm going to build it just like the picture as we get started. Okay, so this is telling me that I need an ammeter at this point. You guys will see A1, I think, on your paper. So see, I checked off ammeter, and now I have this uh, ammeter available down here. So I'm going to put it right in series with the battery, okay? Okay, so now after that, I have some more circuit elements. Then you're going to see a number one on your paper. That number one is the first light bulb. So we can grab a light bulb from the tools here. And what I love about the circuit construction kit, or one of the things that I love, is that when you look at the light bulb, just like in class, see one of the leads will be at the bottom of the bulb, and one will be on the side here at the metal part. And it doesn't matter which lead I put on the bulb, right? And again, you can rotate it when you click on the, um, on the red circle. Okay. So now I have my bulb, and the bulb is connected back to the negative terminal of the battery. 
Now I could use a wire here, use another wire here, and then a third wire here. But when you are looking at a circuit diagram, even though you see all of these corners and things, it's really just one wire, so I can bring that back. So check it out. The bulb is bright. You can see all of these rays, okay, should give us the relative brightness of the bulb. You can see that these blue dots represent the flow of electrons. And what's interesting is that the conventional current is going clockwise, but the electron flow is counterclockwise. And notice that your ammeter up here, right, your ammeter was at zero, and once you turned your circuit on, it because it gave you a reading of 0.9 amps. Okay, now there's one more, I'm going to kind of move this, there's one more element to the circuit that we haven't added yet, and it's on your circuit diagram as V1. V1 is a voltmeter. Now a voltmeter is going to work way different than an ammeter, so let me show you um, how. So look over here for tools, and we can click voltmeter, and there it is, just shows up on your screen. So let me move them to the side here. A voltmeter has this black lead, and then it has this red lead. And we're going to talk more in depth about voltmeters um, really soon. But the voltmeter is going to be able to measure the delta V, or the electric potential difference, between two points. So notice, very different than when you're measuring the current with an ammeter. The current with an ammeter is at one point. And so when we put the ammeter in, we put it in series with the rest of the circuit elements. The voltmeter we're going to put in parallel with the circuit elements. And on the handout, you're basically looking for two delta Vs. The first one it says is delta V across the battery, and then the other delta V says the delta V across one, where item one is the light bulb. Okay, so we can find the delta V across the battery. I have my um, voltmeter here. And I'm going to put the black lead here, and I'll put the red lead at the other side of the battery. And it says that the delta V is 9 volts, so I can go ahead and write that down. So I wanted to put my red lead at the positive terminal of the battery, and my black lead at the, towards the negative terminal of the battery. And let's just say I didn't, okay? Let's say that I reversed them you'll see that it gives you a negative 9 volt reading. Okay, so the magnitude is the same, but if you put the um, red volt closer to the positive terminal of the battery, you'll get the sign correct here on your delta V reading. Okay, cool. So now the next reading we need for delta V is going to be across the light bulb. So I'm going to bring the voltmeter over here. I, this time I'm going to put the red on this side, which will be closer to the positive terminal of the battery and I'll put the black one on this side, closer to the negative terminal of the battery. And notice you have the reading here as 8.998 volts. And this is pretty close to 9 volts. We're going to talk about in class, okay, why is this reading less than the reading that we got from the battery here? Um, but for the um, purposes of the activity today, you can just put 9 volts in for this reading, okay? Okay, so that's how you can set up your um, simple circuit in the circuit con using the circuit construction kit. I hope that you found the um, tutorial really helpful to kind of get you started. And every time you see that those voltmeters, make sure that you see exactly where those leads are going. So the main idea, guys, is that with a voltmeter, you're measuring the delta V across some circuit element, whether that be the battery or a light bulb. So that's why you have these, uh, the red and the black, because we're measuring two points, the electric potential at both points, and then we want to subtract those. That's what's giving us the delta V. Okay, and that's done for you by the voltmeter. Whereas when we're measuring the current using the ammeter, we're getting the, the current through that point. Okay, so we have one point and that's in series. Okay, so I hope that you found this really helpful. If you guys have any questions, I'll be checking in while I'm at the conference into my email, so just feel free to email me. I hope you have a good time today, and I hope that as a result of today's class, you get this amazing list of all of the patterns that you find when elements are in series and when elements are in parallel. Okay, have a great day, everybody.